Hey, how's everybody doing? Welcome to storytelling here. I got a few more people here I'm going to let in. Just give me a second. And uh, uh, for better or for worse, this is uh, really kind of a one on one, even though we got like five people in the class. So maybe it'll be a five on one. I don't know. Um, so I'll tell you what we're going to do, uh, if you can, um, I'm going to start just kind of how I see you guys and we're going to go around. Everybody's just going to come kind of give me a little brief introduction of yourself and basically a kind of a synopsis of what you want to get out of LA film school and your career path, what you're looking to do. So, uh, Maria, let's start with you, Maria Walker. Are you, uh, there? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Rock and roll. All right. Welcome the storytelling so real quick just give me kind of a quick synopsis of uh you and uh, what you want to get at la film school and uh, what your career goal is um i'm based in lincoln nebraska a single mom i work a daytime full full-time job and a night one and i do this in between it all and there's i don't know exactly i just knew i wanted to do something where i'm helping my friends promote their businesses maybe do a podcast um, but now I'm learning there's so much more behind media communication. So I don't know exactly what I want to do out of it, but I, I'm enjoying what I'm learning so far. So. Okay. All right. Well, that's a pretty good synopsis. Uh, Patricia, let's go over to you. Can you hear me? Yep. Got you now. Okay, cool. So I'm from El Paso, Texas. Um, I'm a mom of a five-year-old. A uh, boy. Um, what I want to get out of the LA Film School is um, I want to work as a social media man uh, manager. Um, uh, as well, like I was in between that one, if not, um, also PR, doing public relations, is another one. Okay. Um, but I do work as a full time uh, social media moderator. On the site, okay. So, yeah. Okay. Are, are you related to Jess? Yes, uh -huh. that's my sister. <laughs> okay. Yes. So, why don't we go to Jess? Jess, do you know Patricia? Does she owe you money? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, yes, my sister. Um, so I'm also from El Paso, Texas. Um, uh, what I'm looking to get is just basically maybe networking skills. That's something that I lack and I'm just kind of intimidated by. Um, I also want to work in PR, social media manager. Um, just looking forward to that. Okay. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, uh, Tamia, is it Tamia? Yes, it's Tamia. Okay. Um, so I'm not a single mom, but um, I do have a child. Um, I work six days a week. So Monday through Saturdays, I work. Um, I'm looking to become a journalist. Uh, uh, yeah, journalist. Um, however, I do want to start podcasting on the side. So our last assignment, when we learned how to do like, you know, use the microphone and stuff, I thought that was kind of cool. So I'll take that knowledge. But right now I'm just, um, I'm a program director at a Taekwondo place. So <clears throat> really? excuse cool. me. Yeah, it's really, it's actually really fun. Um, it's a lot more work than people even know. So um, I'm kind of in charge of my building location. So, I mean, that's not within my degree, but that's kind of what I'm doing at the moment. So now that I'm in school, I'm trying to, you know, use my degree and eventually move to Texas for better opportunities because I'm in Virginia okay. right now. So. Okay. All right, cool. All right, uh, Shantae. Hi, I'm Shantae. I'm originally from New York. Um, I live in Atlanta. I'm actually moving back to New York in the next couple of months. Um, I'm actually a brand designer and social media manager. Um, I actually wanna get into more of the marketing field um, and PR. Okay. All right, and let's, uh, Amber, you're, you're last on the list there on my uh, screen. Can you hear me? I gotcha. Okay, so my name's Amber. I live in Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm a bartender server at a fancy smancy sushi bar and grill. Um, I work like 60 hours a week and then do this in between. I also have four kids. Um, I haven't really decided what I wanna do with the degree yet. 
I just know that I'm very interested in like maybe social media management or marketing, something like that, maybe even podcasting. So when I was scrolling on TikTok, because I'm a TikTok creator, I noticed um, an ad for LA Film School and I was really interested in what it had to offer. So I am excited to see where I can take this degree. Okay. All right. So it sounds like, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five of you are interested in kind of the PR social media side. And then to me is interested in a little bit of journalism slash social media. Um, so so here, here's how I'm going to start this. Uh, it, it's all the same. It, it's all the same beast these days. It doesn't matter if you want to go into podcasting or journalism or social media or public relations or marketing. It, it all does boil down basically to storytelling. Now, I mean, a lot of people think of storytelling as a, oh, okay, chapter one, chapter two of a novel, and, and we'll teach that in this course, and you'll learn some of the basics of how to write a book or, or you know, maybe a screenplay or something along those lines. But the concept is basically that you have got to know the story of either the company that you are going to be working with or for, or you have to know the story of yourself so you can get yourself out there and promote yourself. I would 100% recommend that you're simultaneously doing those at all times. So whether you go get a job for some other company and you're going to be doing social media or marketing or whatever it is for them, you still need to simultaneously be pushing yourself out there as some form of content creator, uh, social media guru, you know, touching all the bases of all the social media sites. So, you know, podcasting, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, you've got to be able to kind of build a brand of yourself and you've got to be able to tell that story. You got to know what your story is and then you've got to get it out into the world. Because the truth is, if you want to be a writer, okay, let's just say you want to go be a traditional novelist, okay, o old school, and you're going to go write a book and that's awesome. That's great. Um, if you don't have the audience and you're going to self-publish your book, you know, who's it going to go to? And so from that same level, it's the same question over and over again. If you go work for a company and you're getting paid to be their marketer, who are you marketing to if you don't have that audience already built in? So that goes back to this kind of catch-22, right, which is really hard. Well, how do you sell you know, to your product to increase audience awareness when you don't even have the audience to begin with. And that's where you have to touch all of these different buttons. So you've got to be able to have a, a certain number of, you know, content that's being pushed out on a regular basis. And then you've got to have a certain level of quality that is consistent. So, so let's take YouTube, for instance. If you're going to be a content creator on YouTube and you're going to be pushing stuff out for, again, either yourself, hopefully first, and then somebody who might pay you, you know, you've got to be able to play the YouTube game. You've got to be able to configure the algorithm and you've got to be consistent and you've got to have high quality stuff. So if you study any of the, you know, big YouTubers over the years, you know, a lot of these guys take somebody like Mr. Beast. You know, he started off from basically nothing, basically, you know, doing it in high school, lying his way through with his mom and telling him, telling her that he was in college when in reality he was living at a buddy's house and was still doing YouTube videos. And he was just consistent and consistent and consistent. And eventually things started to pop. And that's, that's it. Like there's no secret to any of these formulas. You can go to work for a major PR company or a major marketing firm in New York or Chicago or LA. It's the same formula. You can do it yourself. The concept is the same. Now, what the marketing company is going to do that you may not be able to do is if they have content, you know, they can put top dollar behind it and then they can put top dollar behind pushing it out into the world. Right. So you're going to a certain number of, you know, sponsored uh, posts that you can put out and they get X number of audience members to be able to see it. And so you can kind of grow it that way. Well, unfortunately, or I, mean, I don't know everybody's economic situation, but I can't go spend, you know, tens of thousands of dollars on social media posts in order to go get my, you know, my book seen out into the world. So I've got to go take that more organic approach and I've got to be able to grow myself, grow my, my brand, grow my identity in a more organic fashion. Now it helps if you you know, have something else that you're kind of doing on the side, you know, the TikTok and the Instagrams and things like that may have very little to do with what your product may be. Now, maybe your product is you, right? Maybe you are, 
the, the social media you know, person that people are coming to see. But even if you are, you're still at some point probably going to want to distribute some kind of merchandise. So again, this is all part of this like funnel that we're going to be kind of, you know, creating in order to build the brand. Now, whether that brand again is you or it's somebody that you work for, the formula is all the same. So uh, let's see, Shantae, you said a uh, question would LinkedIn. Yes. So her question is, would you suggest LinkedIn? Absolutely. Uh, there, there should not be one social media site that you neglect. Okay, I mean, if Twitter blows up, right, because Elon Musk has come in and he blows it up and Twitter goes away, fine, get rid of Twitter. But until then, use it for all that it's worth, right, and utilize it as, as, as best that you can. What you have to do, whether you, you know, being a storyteller, being a marketeer, being in public relations, they're all kind of the same. Being a journalist, it's all kind of the same thing. You are a storyteller. OK, you're crafting a story now, whether it's a fictitious story in the world of the novel, that's great. Or you're going to go write a screenplay and it's fictitious. That's great. You still have to create the story of you. Right. You kind of got to be able to tell the tale of you and why this particular story may speak to another audience. So the idea here is that you are learning how to tell a story about you and the brand of you as much as you are the story of whatever it is you go and create in the world. And, you know, story is what this is all about. I don't care if you're doing Facebook posts or YouTube videos or podcasting, whatever it is, it's all story. Okay, so, uh, you know, that's the, the most important part is what I hear over and over again, oh, I don't know how to write, or where do I begin? Well, you're gonna begin like everybody does when they're creating the story, and that is theoretically with a blank page, right? Now that blank page may be a blank screen now where you don't know what YouTube content to go create, or it may be a blank screen because you're typing out something for a podcast. It doesn't matter, the concept is the same. You've gotta formulate the idea of your brand. You've got to come up with what it is that you're going to produce in this world. And then you've got to be able to tell the story of how that is going to have an impact, how it's going to have value. Every story has value. Every Facebook post has a value if it's good, right? Every YouTube video has a value. There is a value there. Every story has to have a value. So it's your job to know what that value is. Now, value can come in different ways. Value can be, you know what? I watched that and I got smarter or that was really funny. And so the value is humor. So th the idea here is still the same concept. As you build the story of you and you build the story as you go out into the world of kind of creating a product of whatever it is that you're going to build, that you're consistently just telling story over and over and over again all right so i'm going to take a i'm going to pause anybody have any questions anybody have any thoughts on this wow that's good <laughs> um all right so here here's the idea the I, okay good nobody has any questions so this is not this is not a lecture all right i'm not here to basically kind of hear myself talk um, and the videos, you can watch those at your leisure in the class. I mean, the story of, of storytelling is basically set up with uh, how to write a book or how to write a screenplay. And then you are going to build up, you know, writing a page of a novel in week one. Week two, you're going to develop it a little more. Week three is more journalism. Week four, you're going to be able to kind of finish up the, the first couple pages of a novel. Uh, the idea, though, is basically the same. We want to be able to have, I don't care how long or how short a story is, you're going to want to have a hook. So every good story has a hook, and every good story can be summarized in a relatively quick way. So, you know, if I told you about a, a story about a dad who loses his son and he goes looking for him, it's like, okay, well, that sounds like a pretty good story. If I tell you that it's that story, but it's a fish and he's looking for his son in the ocean, you're like, hmm, okay, that sounds kind of interesting. Th I can sum up an entire movie very quickly and start to convey it because I know my story so well, it only takes a few sentences to get it out. All of the stories that you go out and tell in the world need to kind of be that succinct, okay? 
because I mean, imagine that you've, you know, you go to a movie, you see the movie, your friend asks you what it's about. You can pretty much just rattle it off. You've seen the story, you know the story now. Right now, you may not know your story. You may not know what your particular story is about. You may not know what your brand is about. That's okay. Um, you know, the best stories are written over and over and over again. The best brands are developed through trial and error. It's the same concept over and over again. Your brand, your story, your messaging, PR, social media, marketing, podcasting, journalism, all of these operate in the same fundamental way. People like to look at them like, oh, well, you know, I'm gonna go do podcasting. I say, no, you're gonna go do all of it. You're gonna go do it all. You're gonna have a podcast once a week. You're going to be able to push yourself out on, you know, Twitter uh, seven times a week. You're going to be able to have a YouTube video, a video of your podcast on YouTube every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. You're going to be able to simultaneously know how to market for a company that's actually paying your bills. And, you know, they want to be able to sell health insurance and you're going to know how to sell health insurance to a broader audience. It's the same tools. OK, so it's up to you to find the story. And to find the story, so for, for fiction, it's easy. You ask the questions, what if? If you're a journalist and you're going about finding the story, you dig, you investigate, you ask you know, some of those questions. A lot of times those questions are who, what, when, where, why, and how. But the idea here is that you're still uncovering story, okay? So I, I, I want to be able to, you know, get some more specifics of each one of you and talk a little bit more about your specific needs. But I, I'd like to also open up your mind to the idea that these aren't separate entities, that each one of these formulas now are the same concept. And here's the beauty. It's the beauty of it. And it's also the curse of the, of the modern world. Because it used to be that if you wanted to go be a journalist, you would have to go, you know, put together your resume tape, put together your reel. You'd have to go ask permission to go out into, you know, some small market TV station, you know, in the middle of nowhere. And then you'd work your way up through a market system before eventually, you know, you're in New York City or something. You have to ask permission. If you wanted to be a writer, you know, and you wanted to be, a, you know, a novelist, you would have to you know, write a book, have to be great, and send out letters to agents and send out letters to publishing houses. Please, somebody look at my book. Please, somebody look at my book. I don't need to do that anymore because the gatekeepers, by and large, are gone. So if you want to be a podcaster, there's nobody stopping you, right? If you want to be a novelist, that's great. Nobody's going to stop you. You can go self-publish until your heart is content. Now, capitalism and the market system will decide whether your product is good. For that to occur, you need to have the biggest audience. And that's where all the rest of this stuff comes to play. So I, I think it's important that each one of you look at this from two different perspectives. Four or five of you, and I haven't gotten to, to Brittany yet, but four or five of you basically said you wanted to get into PR and social media. That's great. For me, if I'm going to hire somebody for PR or social media, the first thing I'm going to go do is go look at their Facebook page or their social media accounts. Not because I want to establish history of like even who they are. I want to see, well, how are you selling yourself? Because if you can't get out in the world and sell your brand of whatever it is of you, and then why are you going to go be able to help me with my, with my you know, Italian restaurant you know, on the corner. How are you going to sell more spaghetti if you can't do a good job of selling your own brand, the brand of you? You know you. You don't know anything about my restaurant. So it's the same idea. So it's up to you to kind of build this momentum of being able to craft the story of you, right? And that's hard. It's hard because you don't necessarily know, well, how do I go do that? Well, each one of you has got your own story. Right, you have your own unique assets. You have your own unique attributes. You have your own history, your own backstory. You know, just like if we were to all sit down and write uh, the same novel with the same idea about a dad looking for, you know, his son in the ocean, we'd all come up with a different way to tell that story. So the idea here is that you begin to formulate a plan and a schedule for pushing yourself out there and getting comfortable of being on camera. 
getting comfortable being able to think on your feet because that's what podcasters do. That's what YouTubers do, right? Getting comfortable and being able to know how to shoot, be comfortable, know how to edit. You've got to be able to have all of these skill sets in the modern world. You've also got to be a good writer because all of it is still story. Editing is story. Shooting video is story. Uh, podcasting is a story, right? Uh, being a journalist, being a reporter, that is story. So again, I, I want you all to kind of like have this concept of, oh, okay, this isn't just me, you know, showing up to somebody, somebody else's job and they're just going to pay me to do social media work. That will happen. But if you're not generating a certain, you know, number of likes for some companies, because that's their gauge, then what good are you, right? What good are you for, for them to be able to pay you? So you've got to be able to kind of walk in the room and already have this resume even though you haven't even worked in in, in the, that job you know before you haven't been in that career field before so i'm going to stop i'm going to talk to Brittany real fast Brittany. so we went around the uh proverbial room here what is your goal at la film school and what do you want to do for your career um to be honest like i really i really started off wanting to learn marketing and advertising even though I see that the school has a lot more to offer. So it made me more interested in actually seeing where I will be headed versus where my initial thought of what I wanted to do. Um, I still want to make sure I learn marketing, marketing and advertising is something I really lack in and um, reaching a potential audience of things that I do. Um, but one day I will like to go into public relations, but I do want to start off with learning marketing and advertising, to be honest. Well, that's good. Look, look. Uh, most of you are, are kind of in the same, you know, mindset here. You want to do PR, you want to do marketing, uh, social media. The truth is all of you should kind of be there. I, it, to me, if you want to go be a journalist, that's great. You're going to have to sell the brand of, of you, right? And, right? and Maria, if you want to go do, you know, podcasting or YouTubing, you're going to have to go sell the brand of you. So, yeah. you know, public relations and marketing to me is, first off, I don't even really know the difference. I, I don't think there really is a difference. Anymore. I mean, the concept is the same. As many eyes on product as, as is possible, right? And that's yeah. the name of the game. I don't care what you're building or what your brand is. You know, it is all about getting as much, as many eyeballs on product as possible. So, all right. All right. Anybody got any thoughts on anything that I said? Tamia, you popped up. It's good to see you. Look at her. Tamia was brave. She's the first one on camera. <laughs> um, all right. So look, this is, uh, we can go around specifically. Like, I think most of you, your last class was probably podcasting. Is that about right? No? no. Okay. No. Well, podcasting is very specific in, in to some of you, some of you have had podcasting, I believe, right? Has anybody had podcasting? No, my last class was um, Introduction to Media Communication, okay. where we just introduced podcasting. Okay. okay, okay. So you will do a podcasting class, and that's going to be hyper-focused and specific on, you know, four weeks of podcasting. That's great, right? So you're going to learn the tools on how to go about being a podcaster. That's terrific. What you need to start to come up with is now, in story, what if I were to put on a podcast for real, what would my podcast be? Okay. What you really need to come up with is what am I selling? Right? What am I ultimately selling here? And it's great to be able to get a job, like I said, for it doesn't have to be an Italian restaurant. That's kind of small potatoes. Let's say it's it's Nike, okay? And and Nike has brought you on board to be able to be a part of their PR team. Well, those are literally big shoes to fill, right? Because they're going to have uh, an expectation of expertise that you have got to bring to the table. And the only way you're going to get in the room, other than being young and cheap, is to be able to say, look at what I've been able to do with my own stuff, right? So you've got to be able to build that brand. That's where something like the podcasting class would come in handy, right? Ask yourself, what am I selling? Can I build a real podcast around what I'm selling? So let's go around the room again. 
and let's ask, what would you be selling? What product would you be selling? That does not have to be a real product, okay? I'm not asking you to go sell shoes for real. If Maria wants to be a YouTuber, then she's literally selling Maria, right? She's selling something that she's able to do. So Maria, let's start with you. You have to sell the product of you in some way. What is that going to be? Uh, for YouTube or for podcast? Whatever it is, whatever you, when you look at your scope of your career at LA Film School, and there is something that you want to be able to put out in the world that people go, I know who Maria Walker is. What will they know Maria Walker for? Uh, definitely a podcasting. I've been coming up with ideas that I want to start one. And then um, within that, helping, um, I do on social media, a lot of promoting of when my friends throw club function parties and their restaurants and um, businesses and stuff like that. So I do a lot of networking like that for, for people I know. So All right. things. Let's start, let's start with podcasting. So you've got an idea for podcasting that you want to do? I'm kind, yeah, I'm kind of playing around with an idea, yeah. Okay. I'm not going to ask you what your idea is because, I mean, ideas could be sacred. But the idea here is that you need to start mapping out this plan. And yeah. this podcast needs to start to feed you in other arenas. So I'm okay. going to just say a hypothetical, okay? Let's say it's okay. a, uh, a, one of the, you know, one of the, one of the murder mystery podcasts, okay? Okay. And it's uh, it's because yeah. those are big, right? Yeah. So a murder mystery podcast, Maria Walker's murder mystery podcast. And, but now what, that's great. And you can, you know, mm -hmm. sell it to a serious or somebody and they'll be able to pay you money. And that's terrific. But you also want to start building the brand behind the scenes. So if it's a murder yeah. mystery, you're, you're kind of a journalist at that point, right? So what mm -hmm. Maria needs to start doing is behind the scenes on her Twitter and her LinkedIn and her Facebook and Instagram and all the other things is we've got to start establishing Maria Walker, the brand of Maria Walker, as to why I would listen to her in the first place. And maybe yeah. you start to tell the story of that podcast, but in different ways. And that podcast is never just going to be a podcast. It'll never just be a podcast because you're going to have cameras set up in the room so you can take that podcast and you can at least put clips of it out on YouTube every Tuesday because it's got mm -hmm. to hit the algorithm every Tuesday so YouTube begins to reward it. You know, Joe yeah. Rogan is the biggest podcaster in the world and Joe Rogan was never anywhere except for YouTube. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was all YouTube. I mean, YouTube made it. So you've got to think visually and you've got to think, how can I break this out in 27 different parts so it can go out into the world? And if it's podcasting yeah. that you're going to do and you have a brand of that, that's great. That's terrific. You've got your brand. You know what you're going to do. But now you've got to build your audience because you should have, you know, X thousands of people through all these different channels. Because when you push your button on your first podcast to launch, if you don't have a built-in audience already, then nobody's going to hear it. Yep. So that formula that I just kind of went through is the same formula that all of you should be doing. It doesn't have to be for podcasting, okay? But it's the same idea. You've got to build the audience first. All right, let's go to Patricia. Patricia, what are you going to sell in the world? Um, so I've been trying to kind of like build my social media platforms based off like women empowerment. Women empowerment. Okay. That's yeah. good. That's there. You got lots of, lots of material there. Yeah. Okay. So your social media <laughs> posts can all be that and you can literally build up an entire audience on female empowerment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I think that's great. I think you can get a podcast out of that. You can explore all kinds of different issues. I mean, you can do the, you know, the pros and the cons. You can do the forces against it, all those things, right? And you got lots of meat and potatoes there on the plate. So I think that's a really, really good idea. The best part too is if, let's say that Patricia wants to write novels. If she's going to write a novel, it should be in that wheel well, right? Now it can be, uh, you know, 
women murder mysteries. It could be Dateline style, right? I mean, you watch Dateline, it's always, you know, woman was murdered or woman murders her husband. It's always those same kind of like, right. ideas. That's great. Yeah. It fits into that wheel well, right? So now you're selling fiction over here, but mm -hmm. it still fits within the wheel well of the, of the entire brand. So you can get a podcast out of that. You can get your video from you on YouTube of the podcast. You can start to work your way into, you know, nonfiction books or fiction books, t-shirts, whatever it is, you're starting to build the brand of you. And so okay. all of a sudden now, if you really need money because the rest of that stuff isn't working out, mm -hmm. you can go to Nike and say, Hey, Nike, look what I did. Look what I built. I built the brand of me, you know? All right. Tamia. Okay. I always forget to unmute my mic. Um, so I want to stay within the podcasting, but I want to do like gossiping. So I guess I'll be selling. I don't know if that okay. makes sense. So, you know, have you ever seen like the shade room and stuff, what they do? That's what I want to do. All right. So yeah. you're talking like, like TMZ kind of stuff or what? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, that works. I mean, it's worked, you know, since the national Enquirer. I mean, it's always been so look, you, you've got a deep well, that, that's mm -hmm. what you want. You want something that you can continuously pull water from, okay? Because it's not one podcast, it's gonna be you know, a thousand podcasts. It's not one you know, tweet, it's 10,000 tweets. So you wanna consistently be, so you know, Tamia Robinson, whatever the name of your channel is, has got to be branded in all those different ways because that's your story. And your story is going to be, you know, gossip. So yeah. Hollywood gossip, what music? What are we talking about? All of it. If you're famous, we're going to talk about you. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. I want to do like celebrity gossip. So. Perfect. I think that's cool. The only other thing you have to work on then is, okay, how am I going to start to get this information myself? Because TMZ is good because they break the stuff themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. So they've built a fleet, a newsroom. If you want to call it a newsroom, but you know, that kind of caliber for gossip, right? right? So you have got to be able to kind of like start to distinguish yourself as the source, right? So people have to go to you. So it's mm. got to be good. Yeah. And that can be hard. So you've got to develop now, like a journalist, uh, sources. You've got to develop mm -hmm. connections. You've got to be able to like get to know people who may be, you know, who know people kind of concept you just can't make the stuff up so that's how you start to invite like lawsuits and things like that right so you've got to be able to like work that formula a little bit and then you can't just steal it from tmz because people are just going to go to tmz they've already got the audience and and you know they're going to come after you too so that's the hard part the hard part is is that you have the you have the the idea but now you've got to be able to flesh out the resources to make it happen right so so that's just something for you to start to work on like okay well how do i start to develop this stuff how do i actually start to get this out now you can just do you know you and a friend or a couple friends or whatever sitting around the room chatting mm -hmm. about gossip and then you're not breaking the gossip you know you're all kind of like uh you know, like Steel Magnolias. You ever see that movie where the women are all sitting around, you know, the salon kind of thing and they're just gossiping? Like you could do that, you know? Well, the idea is that you're not breaking the news. You're just kind of talking about the gossip that's already out there, right? right. So that's, but that, that enables you to at least start to build a brand around it. Okay. I mean, it's an idea, but the idea is for you to go and start to figure out, okay, well, how am I, how am I going to start to be able to pull more buckets of water out of this well? Okay. Okay. All right. Let's go to Jess. Jess, what are you selling? All right. Um, I was still also like my sister in the women empowerment era, but I kind of want to also play with like um, maybe since I want to be in PR, like event planning, event coordinating, anything like that. Okay. You broke yeah. up a little bit there for me. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah, gotcha. Okay. So female empowerment and then, and then what? I lost you after that. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so I also played with the idea of event planning since I wanted to go into PR, just event coordinating and something in that realm. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, look, that that's fine. I mean, like party planning and event planning and all that's kind of cool. I mean, you know, the truth is a lot of that always stays kind of at like one level. And like you'll get the local restaurant and they'll be like, hey, will you, you know, help us, you know, with this event or we got a new menu coming out or something. And then they'll like pay you in lunches. And that's okay. You know, that's fine. But, um, you know, to be able to pay your bills, you're going to have to be able to like step up to, you know, different, different levels. And it's going to have to be more. So, but you got to start somewhere. And event planning is fine. The best part about event planning is that if you get to good enough events, you know, those events pull in more people. So maybe the restaurant has like the local hospital and the local hospital has, you know, all these different little charity groups. And then all of a sudden you're branching out and you're putting events together for United Way and for the big hospital chain and things like that. That's that you got to start somewhere, right? And that's all good stuff. Um, I still recommend that, you know, you, if you, first off, you've got your sister right there. I recommend that you both yeah. kind of like go in cahoots together and, you know, start to kind of build the brand of female empowerment. Female empowerment is a right. really, you know, it's a good message for you both, obviously, as being sisters, but right. that is, can be part of your brand. I mean, this strong woman brand, awesome. That's great. You know, that's the story of you, right? Right. So, I think that's all good stuff. And then if you want to branch out and do some of this other stuff like event planning or, or whatever, go for it. This world is not this one size fits all anymore. I mean, it's it's like you, you got to be able to do a little bit of a lot or, you know, spread it out all over the place. So pretty much everything you're going to have to say yes to at some point. Gotcha. Like somebody says, oh, well, should I do this? Yeah, probably should do this that right can i get right. eyeballs on product yep i probably should do it you know unless it's illegal you know <laughs> but i mean gotcha. the idea is that you get as many eyeballs into product now and on to, uh, audience into your tent as you possibly can all right shante let's talk to let's let's go to you um what would you be selling i'm actually in the process of starting a podcast and it's real funny um so um i'm more into design community and education like educating all designers whatever level they're at um so. what kind of designers um brand designers okay all right so that's what your podcast is going to be about yes you are sick. yes i couldn't hear you yes Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, I think that's good. Uh, first off, what I like about it is that it's a targeted audience. And, you know, sometimes that very precise, like sniper shot for, for your target is really good versus the broad, you know, kind of like Gatling gun approach. So um, that is a good way to build up a very specific kind of clientele, right? So maybe it doesn't speak to everybody, you know, but it does start to speak, speak to very like precise groups of people, right? And a large enough group of people. I mean, we're not talking like, okay, my podcast is on Amish quilt makers, right? I mean, you know, that's going to be real small. I mean, nothing against Amish quilt makers, but I mean, it's not like the largest audience in the world. So um, it, you're 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 broad enough, but still precise enough where I think you've got a, a good size audience. So how are you going to target them? What would be your idea, Shante, to get them to see you? Um, my ideas is, um, well, basically, um, I started a Facebook um, post the other day about Canva, and it got a lot of people interested of, of what I had to say. And now they're wanting intrigued to know more. So I think I need it. My first episode needs to be based off that specific Facebook post. I think that's great. I think that you should also do all of them. And I think that you've got to become an expert in the field of all of those. So you should do Canva, you should do Adobe, you should be able to talk Premiere Pro, you should be able to do, you know, for better, or for worse, because these are all elements now of design, you know, After Effects, Photoshop, you should be able to have this skill set. And that stinks, particularly, I don't know how much Adobe you know, but Adobe's deep. Like Adobe's yeah, I vast. I, I, I yeah. know pretty much everything except for even XD is one of my favorites for like um, mockups of websites. But um, 
only thing I don't know is After Effects and Premiere Pro. <laughs> well, you'll you'll learn them in, in this school, and that's great. I also think that you can get Adobe certified, and that may be just a nice little feather in your cap. And there's a lot of people. I mean, I go to I go to YouTube all the time <laughs> for like Premiere Pro questions, you know, where I'm like, oh man, how, how can I clean this up a little bit, or how can I make this shot a little bit better? I do it all the time, and I'll look at some of these guys, and they've got pretty good you know what they have they have a, a dedicated customer base you know i mean they'll have like 187,000 subscribers which isn't like gigantic but they have a dedicated base and they're very precise you know where it's like okay this is exactly like youtube is so good at that in particular it's like a modern encyclopedia so if i want to figure out oh okay how do i fix the plumbing under my sink you know i can go to youtube now that guy may not get a lot of traffic but but for you and what you're talking about in your particular, all of the people in this room could benefit because every one of these people are going to have to know Photoshop and they're going to have to know Premiere Pro and they're going to have to know Canva. And I mean, you've got to be able to have those skills like in your wheel well now, particularly for what everybody in this space right now is talking about. I mean, if you're talking about doing anything with social media or, you know, even podcasting, you've got to be able to have those skills. So at the very basic level, you know, you've got to be able to have them. And for you, Shantae, you're going to have to have them at a more advanced level because I have to be able to come to you. You've got to be the expert and, you know, you've got to be the smartest person in the room. And so that's good. And I think that's a great little niche, you know, for you to kind of like go explore. All right, let's hop over to uh, Brittany. Brittany, what's your, uh, what's your product of sorts that you would be selling? um really my artwork um but when it comes to my okay. artwork so you got a real product yeah like but you know like i i mean i know we all go through a lot of things but i really not just putting me on the top pedestal of anyone but you know i i go through a lot of a lot of emotions so i put my i really put my emotions in my artwork um so what I really want to create when it comes to my artwork is mental stability and mental awareness um and having an outlet oh, that's basically. good that's real good see all right great so now what we've got in story that's called the hook okay so now this is not just random paintings is it paintings it's my drawings I don't paint drawings okay I, so it's I not draw. just random drawings and now we've got drawings with yeah. a theme, right? We've got a, a hook that we can hang it on. So, you know, you could do this even from just, uh, it's not just about selling my artwork, right? right. It, it's a funnel and the, the artwork is gonna be down at the bottom. So it doesn't matter what the product is that you're selling. It could be t-shirts or shoes or exactly. you know, whatever, jackets. It doesn't matter, right. but that, that's kind of down at the bottom. Up yeah. here is the top, this is the audience. <clears throat> excuse me we got to get them down to the bottom and so that's where you have this marketing funnel and this is everything up here this is the twitters and the linkedins and the youtubes and the podcasts and all that stuff and we got to get them all down to be able to buy your drawings and the biggest way right. that we're going to be able to do that is not going to be people who like to draw right but that psychological right. wellness aspect of what you're talking about is huge because now all of a sudden you've got this ability to talk emotional stability and depression and trauma right. and you know ways to overcome and you can literally build you know mountains to facebook posts and youtube videos and at the end or in the middle five times sell your drawings right you see what i'm yeah. saying so you're giving the audience you're giving to the audience you're not taking from your audience you're giving to them and then while they're there you can solicit but you got to get them into the tent first okay all right so that's just kind of an idea of how to like go about thinking about this all right amber what about you what what what's what product are you selling okay so i'm at the very beginning stages of all of this um what really made me 
want to do the mm-hmm. social media and all that stuff was I started on TikTok in June, like the very end of June. And I have almost 10,000 followers on there now, which is pretty good, I would say, because yeah. I've, I've seen a lot of people that have been on TikTok for a long time and don't have that big of a following. So what I do on TikTok is um, a lot of comedy. I show my personality through a lot of comedy. I I study the trends and everything that's going on, what filters people are using, the sounds, what people are liking at that time. I do a lot of that. And then I also do some original stuff. Like I'm silly, so I like dad jokes and I'll I'll play with that. I'll throw some dad jokes on there. People like that. Um, I also have, like somebody had just said, I've gone through a lot in my life in the last couple of years were pretty crazy. Um, Addiction had been one thing that I struggled with and I have gotten through. So I like to talk about that on my social media to help people that are maybe going through the same thing or have gone through the same thing. So I throw a lot of different things out um, on my social media, trying to capture multiple groups of people. Okay. Well, I I think that's good. And I think it's bad. I mean, I think it's first off, I, I think you got a lot of different opportunities here. I think you just got to sharpen the tool a little bit. Right. That's what um, I'm trying to I figure think the out right is now. Great. Is... Totally. And that's okay. Right. That's part of this kind of like, like I was talking about, like the blank page. I mean, that's, you're not at a blank page. You know, you're a couple, maybe a couple chapters in, but you still don't know where the story is going to go. Right. Right. So I think that, um, you know, first off, I think the comedy is great. Comedy is aces. You know, when it comes to any of these delivery systems, whether it's a podcast or YouTube or whatever, because yet again, like with Brittany, we're giving to the audience, right? I mean, the idea is that we're giving them something. And then in return, eventually, you know, we're going to try and take something from the audience. So um, I think that's gold. I think the comedy is great. You've just got to retrofit that comedy. So it's going to be either everywhere. And that's hard, right? Like comedy is hard. Drama is easy. Comedy is hard. So, you know, and for you to be consistently funny on a regular basis, I don't know if you are. I mean, that's great if you are. If you're not, it's going to be a real struggle, right? So you've got to be like consistently delivering funny stuff. And, you know, let's go back to somebody like Mr. Beast. I mean, Mr. Beast now has a fleet, essentially, of people, of writers, right? I mean, any of the late night talk shows, it's not just Stephen Colbert, you know, it's him and... 26 writers in the writer's room that you don't ever get to see. <clears throat> so that's hard. But um, the idea here is that, okay, how can I be funny? And what are some of the themes? Well, you talked you talked about a few, you know, drug addiction and things like that. Um, you know, I don't know how much of that we can actually flesh out. That's up to you. But I mean, obviously, there's an arena there. You know, there, there is an audience for that. Now, it's it's not a huge audience. I mean, it's 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 kind of like what, you know, Shantae is talking about when it comes to, you know, the, the branding and the marketeering side of people, of people. You know, it's a smaller niche, but it, again, goes back to that kind of like sniper approach or targeting a very specific group of people. Um, you've got to figure out what exactly am I going to sell and who am I going to sell it to? And that is the hardest thing of all. I mean, it really is. I mean, you know, a lot of people, you know, the other side of this equation that I see a lot is is worse. You have a, a product, you work really hard on that one product, but then you go to deliver it and there's no audience there, right? You don't have the audience built in. So what I'm telling you to do is go at it in reverse and you're gonna build the audience first. So I guess the question is, Amber, What's the best way for you to build the biggest audience? Right. That's, that's exactly what I'm trying to figure out with the TikTok. That's why I feel like I've gained an audience so quickly, but how do I keep them? That's my issue right now. I'm just trying to figure that out. Is everything on TikTok funny? No, not everything. I mean, there's a lot of funny. There's a lot of funny on TikTok. There's a lot of, you know, sounds that people, somebody will say, uh, one sentence that just goes far all of a sudden they have a million people using their sound because they said one funny sentence you know what i'm saying and um i haven't made it that far but i that's what i'm trying to figure out right well look i i I haven't seen your page i haven't i haven't been on your tiktok page obviously so i don't know what exactly you know your brand so speak would be but i wouldn't limit the brand to just tiktok 
I mean, I would start pushing it out as much as you can. I do, I know, do TikTok, Facebook too. That, you know, the other problem is. I'm sorry. I do Facebook I mean, too. I already you know, make some money channel. on Facebook. Okay. How do you do that? <laughs> I already make money yeah. on Facebook. Um, they sent me a little notification because I was getting a lot of traffic and a lot of stuff uh, going on on Facebook to sign up for the digital creator profile. So I did that and I make like 250 a month just based off of likes and, and comments and interactions on my, my reels and my whatever I'm posting on Facebook. So are you just repurposing what you've got on TikTok over on Facebook? Yep. I just put whatever I'm putting Good. on TikTok Good. on Facebook. Yep. Great. I mean, that's why wouldn't you, right? I mean, it's right. it's like a no-brainer anymore. You, you got to like get it out as many different ways as you can. Um, I do a little Instagram right. so, too, but it's not too, it's not too, too much going on Instagram. So what is the end game here for you? Well, what, um, what got me started on TikTok was I see a lot of people eventually they start after they get to 10,000 followers, you can sign up for the creator fund. So then you get people that will uh, connect with you and want you to market their products because you have so many people watching you or liking or, you know, interacting in your, your TikTok videos and all that. So they'll, they'll reach out to you and be like, oh, you, you do like makeup tutorials. So they'll send you the makeup and you'll start selling their makeup or, you know, um, t-shirts or something like that. So that's something I was interested in doing. Tick, uh, Jess just said it and it's true. I mean, TikTok is, uh, it's, 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 it's fickle, man. It's tough. I mean, and it's yes. like a short attention span theater too, you know? So it's, it's, it's really, uh, you know, every day it seems like it's something new. Um, I, I look again, I, I, you have to do it and you and you're doing it well from what you're saying. I mean, from what you've already talked about, I mean, having that many followers in such a short period of time, you're obviously doing something right. That's great. And expanding it into Facebook and making that a monetary gain. That's great. That's, you know, kind of how this game is going to be played. I just need you to come up with the end game, so to speak. What's the, what's the product that you're going to sell? What's the thing that's going to be able to start to make you, you know, the most amount of revenue? Is it going to be podcasting? And if you're going to, let's say it's podcasting, what are you podcasting about? Yeah, I don't know. That's, that's my, issue. that's what I thought, you know, when I started to take these classes is I will learn a lot more, um, skills to be able to figure out what the end game is because i don't know a lot about the the editing and the adobe and the podcasting and all of that stuff so i figure if you, i'm even taking if you these don't, classes even, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what you don't know you do know story okay everybody right. in this room inherently knows story because you've been raised with it you have literally grown up in some capacity with story around you all the time so, you know, your family dramas and, you know, uh, great uncle Ralph who did this or whatever, right? And then go going through elementary school and middle school and dealing with the dramas there. I mean, you guys, everybody knows story. So you've just got to figure out, even if I don't know what a pod, how, to, how to podcast or how to turn on a microphone, what's a story of a podcast that's relative, you know, relevant to what I'm doing in these other arenas that I could do? Now, look, Joe Rogan, is another, again, you know, he was a comedian. He was a stand-up comic. That's kind of what you're doing, right? You're making jokes, just not, you know, in a nightclub at, you know, one o'clock in the morning, but you're making people laugh. And then he's built an entire, you know, career, <coughs> basically bringing in interviews, people that interest him. You could do that. You could yeah. totally do that. And that could be a great podcast. And, and maybe that's, you know, where you end up going. And that's all great. The idea here is that you still have to figure out the end game. You've got to figure out what it is I'm going to go sell and how I'm going to sell it. And, uh, you know, I know that I'm talking to each one of you kind of one-on-one, -on -one, but there isn't one thing I haven't said to Patricia that doesn't apply to Amber, that doesn't, you know, apply to Jess, that doesn't apply to Maria, you know, it all is the same wheel well. Everybody likes to look at this like, you know, it's funny because I have clients and they're like, well, we're thinking about bringing in a, you know, a big marketing company kind of concept. 
And it's like, it's the same thing. The big marketing company or the small one now, it's the same ball game. Everybody's got the same tools. It's just a matter of maybe how much money you want to push behind it in order to be able to get the product seen. So there's no like, like secret ingredient. There's nothing that like this big New York, you know, Fifth Avenue kind of advertising agency that they're going to know that you don't or that you don't have access to know. It's all the same. So you guys just have to go and figure out what is my brand? What is my product? What's my story? Right? Because that's this what this whole course is about. But story to me, you know, it, 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 it's okay. If somebody wants to go be a novelist, I can help you go be a novelist. That's fine. I mean, if you want to go write a book, that's great. Who's going to read the book? Who's going to be able to know that you even wrote the book in the first place? And it's the same idea with all of these different endeavors. So if you're a podcaster or you're a news reporter, or, you know, I've had people come through this class and they want to be like fashion designers. It doesn't matter. It's the same concept over and over and over again. Who are you and how am I going to find you? How would I even find, no matter what you're selling, how would I find you to be able to buy it? Buy it. So if you don't have answers to those kind of questions, then you need to stop and like start to think it out. Here's what I recommend for all of you. You need to start creating a plan. Even if you don't implement that plan, even if like Amber, you're working 60 hours a week and you got, you know, four kids, you still need to be able to have a plan. And the plan needs to be that I will dedicate X amount of time on a daily basis to this. And this is what this is. And you're going to map out exactly what I am building, okay? What I'm going to create, what my product is, and where I'm going to be able to put it into the world and how often. So your plan should be every Tuesday, YouTube, 10 a.m. Every, every day, five minutes a day, I am creating a podcast something, something for my podcast. Every day, I'm going to send out a tweet based on X content, okay? Every day, I'm going to do a Facebook post. And you've got to build this as a business because nobody's going to pay, want to pay you to come in and do it if you're not really kind of already doing it for yourself to some degree, right? I mean, it's great that you get out of here with a degree and you can go, hey, look at my piece of paper. That's great. But the truth is they're going to look at you and they're going to say, great. They have a degree. I probably still have to train them, right? Because if they go to your Facebook page and you got 16 followers on Facebook, what are you doing, right? Did you take what you learned and actually start applying it? That's where people are like, oh, okay, this person is going to help me. And that's when you start commanding the bigger payday. Because all of a sudden people are like, I got to pay this person that amount because they know things I don't. They got secrets. They're wizards, you know? So that's what you want. All right. So anybody else, I know it's almost time here. Any other thoughts, any other questions about this? As I said, this is not, you know, it's all story. But this isn't, oh, how do I write? Okay. Well, that's in the class. You guys can dive into the videos and figure all that out. I mean, it's part of the process. If you don't know how to write and be able to tell a story, you're going to have a hard time telling the story of you. But um, think it over from the perspective of what's my product, what's my brand, how am I going to get my audience, and start to answer those questions. And then I, you've got to dedicate the time to it on a daily basis to be able to start building up an audience. Because when you get out of LA film school, you've got to have an audience. Otherwise, you just got a degree. That's great. You got a degree. That's terrific. Lots of people have degrees. You need to be able to have, this is what gets me in the door to get the job, particularly now, because everybody in this room, frankly, five, five of you, I think, want to be, you know, go into social media and PR, you're all competing with each other now. So, you know, for a job. So you've got to be able to like raise the bar. And if I'm going to hire one of you, right? If I'm going to hire one of you, what, how, in this LA film school, what am I going to go look at? I'm going to look at your resume. Well, you all got the same resume, right? I'm going to go look at what you've put out there in the world on your social media. 
wow, this person has 10,000 TikTok followers. So, all right. Uh, any other questions? No? All right, look, uh, um, best way to get me is on Vonage. Um, you got any questions or whatever, just throw them at me. I'm usually pretty much available, you know, through my office hours all day long. Um, I, I hope you enjoy the class. If you have any questions, you want a one-on-one -on -one or whatever, where you want to like hyper-focus on your particular brand and your particular story or whatever it is, let me know. We can set up a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but again, this is designed really to build you and your brand and your story more than it is to go out in the world and go, you know, sell a book or something. All right. All right. Cool. All right. Well, I'm glad you guys uh, showed up for the class. I appreciate it. And uh, every Monday. So next week, I hope I have, you know, you all return next week. You're going to have a little better idea of a story that you've written. And we can talk a little bit more about that, but we can also hopefully digest a little bit of what I've said tonight. And everybody can kind of present to me a sort of a plan. This isn't a requirement, but the idea is that it betters you. Of Okay. Here's my goal for the next, you know, three years. Here's how I'm going to go about and do it. Okay. Okay. All right. I hope everybody has a great night. I'll talk to you all hopefully uh, soon. Bye.